Greetings of the day. Uh, my name is Samuel Labber, and I am here to demonstrate uh, the uh, the practical component of the National Council syllabus. And today we have the uh, French fine dining uh, menu that we have up there on the board. And if you look at this particular menu, it's a two course menu. And uh, to be a bit more specific, we have a soup followed by a main course. And in the main course, we have one main dish along with two accompaniments. So uh, I will take you through the whole process of uh, preparing these particular dishes. But just before we start off, I would like to tell all of you that we are considering that we are doing this particular class for the fifth semester students. So there will be a lot of things that we will not be going too much in details. And I will let you know as and when I'll be uh, preparing the dishes so that uh, you are a bit more prepared or rather a bit more uh, ready as in what to expect from this particular video. So we will not be specifically showing you or uh, talking too much or elucidating on how to fabricate those vegetables into Chateau or Brunoise or Julienne. And for the same matter of fact, we would not be uh, demonstrating uh, as in how to blanch those vegetables or how to make the basic mother sauces. But if it is a derivative, we will definitely be using the concept of the mother sauces and then adding other ingredients to, to get the particular sauce that we want to prepare. And uh, in this, with this particular note, uh, I would like to start off this particular process. And if you see this particular menu, uh, the first soup is, is a creme du berry. Now, when you talk about this word creme du berry, these are two terms. And uh, if you talk about the word creme, Creme denotes the category or the classification of soup that we already have done in our first semester. So if you're talking about this particular soup, it is not a soup that is based on cream, but it is a soup that will be having a very creamy texture and a consistency. And obviously it will be finished with a bit of double cream. And the second part is the dewberry of this particular menu, which denotes or rather I would say this is a symbolic term uh, to symbolize the presence of cauliflowers in this particular menu. Uh, for example, when, you, when we hear the word pomme, okay, so literally it means apples, but when you see the, the word pomme in the French menu, we, it denotes the presence of potatoes. Okay, if you're talking about epinard, you talk about uh, princess, you talk about uh, choufla, so all of these different, different terminologies are just symbolic with regards to this particular menu. So this soup is a cream variety of soup in which the main body ingredient is cauliflower. Okay. Moving on, in the main course, we have uh, exotic uh, fish that we will, that will be preparing. So we have uh, dan de samo grie, and if you talk about this, but if you break down these words that we have here on the board, dan is the classical cut of fish that we are talking about right now here, uh, which is a steak cut of the fish along its bone. And I'll be showing you as and when we'll be preparing this particular uh, fish preparation. Following which, we have the next word do. Do in French literally means off. And uh, somo is uh, basically the salmon that we're talking about here. It's an uh, anadromous uh, oily fish, very rich in omega-3 fatty acids, so very healthy. And uh, we, uh, we are lucky to get hold of a fresh catch, so we'll be showing it to all of you. And uh, the final word is grillé, which literally means in French grilled. So it's basically a grilled salmon. Okay, so, so it's a grilled salmon where the salmon has been dressed or rather fabricated into darn. This particular fish preparation will be served along with sauce paloise. Now when you talk about this word sauce paloise, uh, paloise is a derivative of an of a hollandaise sauce. And I believe that we all remember uh, our bechamel, velote, espanol, uh, mayonnaise and hollandaise. So mayonnaise, if you're talking about mayonnaise, is the cold emulsified sauce and hollandaise, if you, I'm sure we all remember, is the hot emulsified sauce. So, we are going to add a bit of fresh mint leaves to this hollandaise sauce to convert it to a paloise sauce. It's very similar to the sauce bearness. In the sauce bearness, we add tarragon and chervil, but here we are going to replace the tarragon and chervil with fresh mint leaves. Moving on, uh, the next uh, we have the potato preparation, uh, which is palm fondant. And uh, this particular palm fondant here, this word palm denotes the presence of potatoes in the menu. And the next word fondant is a classical cut of that particular vegetable. Okay, so we have three different types of uh, fabrication that we do with regards to uh, fondant. So uh, it's it's basically a turned vegetable, a turned a fabrication kind of a, a cut, which I'll show it to you as and when we'll be doing this particular dish. So it's a very simplistic, very rustic preparation where we'll be uh, gently searing this particular potato preparation, adding a bit of uh, flavorful ingredients and a bit of stock to it finally cooking it and finishing it in the oven. And finally, the last preparation for the day would be 
petit pois a la flamande and uh, let's break it down again one by one so if you're talking about petit pois petit pois literally means green peas okay petit is small so petit pois small peas or green pea so uh, if you're talking about a la flamande here literally means in the style of flamande and here if you're talking about flamande uh, refers to the style of cooking or the flemish style of cooking which uh, is very uh, close to the region of flanders in the northern part of belgium so this particular dish is basically based on green pea and carrots which will be braised okay now this particular word flamand also gives us a symbolic understanding or an idea that that particular dish it has been stewed or braised okay usually we go for root vegetables so this particular dish will be incorporating carrots that will be uh, fabricated into olivet now olivet is a, a size smaller to the fondant okay so we have fondant and then the smaller version is the olivet with I'll, which i will be showing all of you as and when we will be preparing it and uh, so if you look at this particular menu all we, all we can expect from this menu is a two course meal where we are, we can expect a soup and in the main course we have a main dish that is salmon a grilled salmon accompanied uh, with sauce palouis and accompaniments that is pom fondant and petit pois a la flamand and obviously this particular menu is incomplete without the uh, carb or the carbohydrate that we have here so we can it can be accompanied with any kind of bread rolls that can be served in that particular restaurant or you can very, uh, very well go ahead and place the order depending upon your requirement so we'll be starting off with the uh, identification of the ingredients for the first dish and we'll be going for the first dish that will be a soup the cream variety of soup and like i already told uh, or like like we already discussed it is a thickened past variety of soup okay which will have a very creamy and a light texture and let me just add on one more thing usually creme creme is the french term and if you're talking about in english we say cream so if you're talking about the creme variety of soup or the cream variety of soup we usually go for those kind of ingredients which are highly aqueous by nature okay as in they have good amount of moisture in it and to be a bit more precise they normally or usually do not have any kind of starch in it naturally okay so that's why we normally go for cream of tomato we go for uh, cream of uh, cauliflower cream of mushrooms but on the other hand if you're talking about the puree category of soup these are the soups where usually we go for those kind of ingredients which are naturally high in starch content okay so as we know that cream variety of soup is a thickened variety of soup and the ingredients that we are using doesn't have any kind of natural thickening in it so what we're going to do is we're going to use something that would be helping us to get that de desired consistency of a thickened soup and what is it that we're going to use we are going to use a roux okay and uh, i'm sure all of us know what is a roux and uh, we also uh, remember or know that there are three different types of roux that we predominantly use in the kitchen we have the white roux the blonde roux and the brown roux so we'll be using the white roux to thicken this particular soup just to refresh our mind we have used equal parts of butter and refined flour and we have cooked it lightly till the raw flavor of the flour has been removed okay without changing any color of that particular roux so let's start off uh, so we'll be first of all starting off with a little bit of olive oil and butter and uh, we'll be using a bit of olive oil so that the butter doesn't get burnt followed by a little bit of yeah i'm using salted butter we always add a bit of olive oil or oil or any variety of oil so that we actually prevent the butter from burning very fast okay yeah, and we all know that butter has a very low smoke point so it's very uh, obvious that the butter will immediately get burnt and we don't want any kind of burnt aroma or the color in this specifically especially for this particular soup it needs to be a white creamy soup next ingredient that we'll be adding on would be uh, finely chopped shallots we'll be sauteing the onions in butter and we'll be sauteing it till it is translucent in color we will be careful not to burn the onion once the onion has turned translucent or has softened 
Next ingredient that we'll be adding on would be a bit of chopped, finely chopped garlic. Same thing with the garlic as well. The idea is not to burn the garlic or fry the garlic, but just to lightly sweat it and let the flavor infuse. And as and when you start cooking in the, in the professional world or in the kitchens, uh, always keep a container of water ready. Okay. And ideally we have a stock pot ready, but for this particular setup, uh, always keep a bowl of water ready handy. So that in case the ingredient starts burning, uh, you can just take a bit of moisture and then control the temperature of the container. So my garlic has been sautéed. I'll be adding the next ingredient that is finely chopped celery. And a bit of leek. Finely chopped leek. So we need to remember that leek and celery is a very soft and a very aromatic herb. So we should be careful so that it doesn't burn or caramelize at this point of time. So make sure that you keep on stirring the contents in the saucepan. At this point of time, when my ingredients are already soft, I'll be adding the cauliflowers so we have fabricated the cauliflowers into florets okay and uh, ideally uh, whenever we fabricate cauliflower it's it's best to soak it in salted water so that we can uh, remove the impurities or rather insects that could be present in that particular batch of vegetable so we'll be lightly sauteing the cauliflower idea is not to cook the cauliflower by sauteing it here but just to get a nice aroma in the pot so that you don't get a boiled kind of a flavor when you have this particular soup so we'll be lightly sauteing it and then to this i'll be adding the binding agent okay so here as we were talking about the binding agent we'll be using or we'll be going for the white roux there will be many chefs who will be starting off with a little bit more of the butter and then directly adding a bit of refined flour to it and then uh, cooking it but we are following this particular process because in the hotel we do not make the roux when the order comes in okay so the roux is always ready in hand okay so we will be adding the white roux and I suggest always remove your pan away from the flame whenever you add any ingredient. So I have purposely not add the seasonings as of now because as this is a cream soup, I would be cooking this particular soup. I'll be adding the stock. So here I'm going to use a vegetable stock and again the same concept. I believe all of us remember how to prepare a white stock. So we have, we have prepared a white stock made out of vegetables. And we also need to understand and remember that the actual flavor of this particular soup is the quality or the effort that has been put in to prepare a good quality stock. Okay. So we'll be simmering this particular mixture as of now till the vegetables are soft and tender. And uh, once it is soft and tender, we'll be passing it through a strainer or a chinoise and uh, the residue will be cooling it off putting it in the blender and making a paste out of it and then finally again sieving it back to this particular soup so once we do that the consistency and the texture of the soup will become a bit more thick and then on completing that particular process we'll be adding salt and a little bit of crushed white pepper powder and uh, finishing it with a little bit of double cream 
So we'll be simmering it for some time till the vegetables and the ingredients are soft enough and then finally we'll be uh, straining it and liquidizing it. So once we have simmered the soup and uh, let me just emphasize on the word simmering because uh, please make sure that you don't boil the soup. So we simmer it and once the cauliflower and all the ingredients have softened, we'll be straining it up, cooling the residue and then putting it in the blender and puring it. Okay. And students, please be careful. Uh, please cool the mixture properly thoroughly before you put it in the blender. Otherwise, you know, there will be a lot of accidents and because of the heat, uh, you, you don't want the whole soup splashing all around the place. Okay. So we have already strained the liquid. We have uh, pulverized it or pureed it and added back to the container. So this is the soup that we already have as of now. So what we're going to do right now is we'll be finishing off this particular soup and uh, we'll be adding the seasonings as in a little bit of salt and I suggest whenever you prepare any kind of soup and if you're not too sure about the seasoning it's always better to keep the seasoning on the lower side because in case the guest requires a bit more of it we can furthermore uh, add salt to it but if it is excess we, we can't do anything about it so we'll be adding the next ingredient that, that, me, that will be a little bit of white pepper powder and as this is a cream variety of soup we'll be adding a bit of double cream and as I'm, I'm addressing to a group of students who are there in the final year of the three year degree course I believe all of us know the different types of cream that we normally use in the kitchen. So this is the double cream that we have used for this particular preparation. And please remember that do not boil the soup and especially after you have added the cream, refrain from simmering for a long period of time because as we know that uh, cream is an emulsion, okay, so we don't want to curdle it. Okay? So once the soup is ready, uh, we'll be going ahead and do the plating. Now when we do the plating, the components or rather the ingredients that we'll be needing would be uh, some small florets of cauliflower that has been blanched in salted water and a little bit of fresh uh, parsley. So we'll be using the flat leaf French parsley and uh, we'll be trying to keeping it, uh, this, uh, we'll, we'll try to keep this particular dish very simplistic and uh, simple but just to give it a bit of color and a bit of uh, uh, eye appeal. We'll be adding some more components and assembling this particular soup. So I'll be using a soup bowl. So now I hope all of you also understand that why I told or emphasized on uh, not caramelizing any of the ingredients when you're starting off this cooking process. Because if there's, a piece, if there's even a small piece of garlic or the leek or the celery that got burnt during this during the sauteing process it will be very much evident when you plate this particular soup okay so uh, we have the soup ready and uh, I'll be pouring the soup in the soup bowl So the soup should have a nice creamy texture and a nice clean appearance and a subtle aroma. Okay. So once I have poured the soup next thing would be placing the cauliflowers these are the blanched cauliflowers and uh, make sure that it doesn't dip or sink in that particular soup So the next 
thing that we'll be adding would be a bit of flat leaf or the French parsley. And I suggest whenever you go for your trials or whenever you go and prepare any kind of uh, food, be it in your home or in a professional setup, I suggest always keep a bowl of uh, cold water ready and a bunch of herbs steeped in it so that you can decide on the uh, ingredients that you'll actually need when you actually do the plating of this particular food. So we'll be garnishing this particular soup with uh, some blanched cauliflowers and a sprig of fresh uh, French parsley. And just to finish off this particular soup, we'll be placing a, a nice lavash. And uh, here the soup is ready for pickup and to be served hot. So the next dish that we'll be preparing would be the dan de samo uh, grie. And uh, like we uh, spoke about this particular dish initially, so we're going to use the dan of a salmon and we have got hold of a fresh Norwegian salmon and this particular salmon fish and predominantly we need to understand that it's a very oily fish very flavorful so we need to marinate it with certain ingredients that will be very subtle so for this particular preparation uh, we are going to use just a bit of salt and white pepper powder so we'll be lightly marinating it and then placing this particular fish on a hot griddle now please be careful that whenever you cook any kind of fish Make sure that the griddle or the hot plate is well seasoned okay or on the other hand if you are not too sure about the hot plate or the quality of the tempering on the hot plate it's always safer to go for a frying pan that has the griddle marks on it so i'll be taking a bit of uh, salt so we'll be adding the seasonings a bit of salt and a bit of pepper powder and like i was telling you just be careful whenever you're doing the seasonings for different types of seafood uh, if, you, if you're working with prawns or with any kind of a delicate fish or any other seafood for for, the, for that instance if, you, if you're working with uh, lobsters or prawns try to keep the seasoning on the lower side because they tend to get salty very fast and the idea the actual reason is because the the flavor of this of this particular seafood is so light and subtle that it just takes on the uh, other marinades or any kind of flavoring that you add to this particular dish so cooking time also it requires less compared to chicken or other non-veg items so we'll be using this uh, non-stick pan once the pan is hot a little bit of olive oil And uh, just remember that whenever you're grilling any kind of fish or any meat item, make sure that the hot plate is very hot. Okay, the temperature of the hot plate is very important. So we'll be placing the fish here as the skin is not exposed. So it, if it would have been a pav or a steak cut of the particular fish, uh, we need to remember that we always start off with grilling the skin side down. Okay, so we always start off with the skin side down. We get the grill marks. We get a nice crisp. Uh, color and the texture on the skin of the fish and then we grill the other part but here for that instance uh, we don't have much of the skin that has been exposed so uh, to be on the safer side keep the temperature of the hot plate towards the higher side to get a nice grill mark on this particular fish so basically if you're working in a very busy restaurant where you have lots and lots of orders coming in so we can just place it on the hot griddle, get the grill marks and then place it in the oven to finish it off and in the meantime you can finish off the sauce, the accompanying sauce. But here uh, we'll be starting off with the grilling of the fish and we'll be placing the fish on the griddle or the hot plate. To get a nice grill mark on it. So if you want a crisscross mark on it, you can just change the direction of this particular fish once it's done on this side. And uh, so we'll be grilling on both the sides, maybe approximately uh, three minutes on each side because it's uh, comparatively a, a small steak, so it will not take much of time. And anyways, uh, cooking of fish or seafood takes comparatively less time compared to the other non-veg or the red meats. So as and when the fish is grilling, I'll be talking about the accompanying sauce that we'll be working with. 
that will be the sauce palois and like I already said that the sauce palois is basically a sauce that is a derivative of the hollandaise okay so I will not be preparing the hollandaise sauce but will be using the hollandaise sauce and adding in friendly, freshly chopped mint leaves to finish off the hollandaise sauce and for that matter of fact you can see that uh, we have already placed the fresh mint leaves on the tissue paper or the kitchen towel so once the fish has is ready and it has been grilled we will be, we'll be just finally chopping this particular herb adding it on to the hollandaise that will be ready at this point of time we will be flipping over the fish on the other side and allow it to cook so I'm, as I'm working with only a piece of fish here so I will not be uh, placing it in the oven so we'll be allowing it to cook it now on low heat okay so the idea is putting the fish on a hot plate or a hot griller getting the grill marks sealing the uh, sides of the fish or the skin of the fish and now allowing it to cook slowly and in the meantime we'll be uh, finally chopping the mint leaves which will be added to the hollandaise sauce and we'll be finishing it off and presenting it For the sauce, uh, we'll, we have already dried up the mint leaves and we'll be finally chopping it up. And uh, just to add on to this particular part when we are doing this part, uh, we had purposely not chopped it and kept it because these are very tender herbs and uh, it's always better to chop it a la minute and uh, always use a very sharp knife when you fabricate the soft herbs because the idea is to finely cut it or slice it and not to bruise them so if you have if you're using a blunt knife your herbs will get bruised and uh, it will turn black very fast so you cannot keep it for a long time so refrain from yielding in to the temptation of double chopping your herbs so the idea is just not to fabricate it or chop it you know the idea is to slice it neatly so that it doesn't get bruised and the essential oils and the flavors remains intact otherwise your herbs are gonna bleed and it will exude the color to the particular sauce so we'll, we'll move on to the fish right now and as, as we can see that the fish is done okay fish is already cooked and just to finish off this particular fish uh, I'll be increasing the, increasing the temperature and uh, this is again one more thing that we can all remember that whenever you are grilling any kind of meat towards the end of cooking always always increase the temperature of the particular pan so that the product will not be very soggy and oily okay and just to add on a bit of more of flavor to this particular dish I'm gonna add a little bit of butter and there are many chefs who use different variations of this particular butter so you can use different types of compound butters, uh, garlic flavored butters or different herb flavored butters to just give a nice subtle aroma and a flavor to this particular fish. So once the fish has been gilled, I'm just going to put it off the flame and place it on a kitchen towel. So we'll allow the fish to exude all the extra oil or the butter 
that we do not want to serve it to the guests and we'll allow the fish to just rest for a few minutes and in the, in the meantime we'll be finishing off the sauce Paluis, where we have the Hollandaise sauce that is already ready and uh, so we have actually taken white wine and white wine vinegar added a bit of chopped shallots to it a bit of crushed peppercorns and reduced it to two-thirds of its volume and then we strain that particular liquid allow it to cool down and then we add the egg yolks to it and furthermore we whisk it on a double boiler be very careful when you're cooking it on, the, on a double boiler because the idea is not to curdle this uh, this particular sauce okay so you cook it on a double boiler under controlled heat and once it's, it reaches sabayo or the ribbon consistency we add the clarified butter to it and a simple formula for uh, or, or the ratio of the butter clarified butter is to the egg yolk is usually between 40 to 50 ml of clarified butter per uh, egg yolk now this 40 to 50 is because of the size of the egg that varies from from region to region so we have the hollandaise sauce that is ready and now to this we'll be adding the chopped mint And as this is a hot emulsified sauce, please remember that we need to keep this particular sauce warm at all times. So we'll give it a light mix. And here our sauce is ready. So the next preparation that we're going to do would be fourth item that is there on our menu, which is the pom fondant. And uh, for the pom fondant, we need to fabricate the potatoes, the baby potatoes into the shape of a fondant that is basically needs to be turned. So, so we have already turned the potatoes and kept it ready, soaked in water. And I'm sure all of us know why we have soaked it in water. As we all know that if we do not soak it in water, the potatoes will oxidize and it will turn brown in color which is something that we do not want. So uh, for this particular preparation, all we need is potatoes that has been turned into the fondant shape, some garlic that needs to be crushed, few sprigs of fresh thyme, and a bit of butter, a bit of olive oil, and a good flavorful stock. Okay, so here we are gonna use the vegetable stock but uh, if you do not have any kind of uh, restrictions regarding to the food that you consume, uh, it's always better to go for a chicken stock. So, but for this particular preparation here today, we are going to, uh, we are going to go ahead with the vegetable stock. So let us start it off. We'll be setting the range to medium hot, a bit of olive oil, because the idea is to get a nice, caramelized color on this particular potatoes so we need to caramelize them and once you get a nice caramelized uh, or, or a caramel color then we'll be add, adding in the other herbs and finally the stock and then finishing it in the oven okay so we have added the olive oil next thing I'll be adding the chato potatoes. In the meantime, as this particular potato is being cooked, We'll be peeling some of the garlic, okay, and then lightly crushing them. So we'll be cooking it to get a nice, uh, to basically to sear it and to get a nice caramelized 
color on this particular potatoes and you can see this nice uh, golden color that is gradually coming up at this point of time I'll be adding a bit of butter to it and we'll be adding the crushed garlic and the thyme so once i've get I've, I've got the caramel color on this particular potatoes next thing is i'll be adding the stock and here as i already mentioned i'll be going for the vegetable clear stock so i'll be not adding too much of liquid in this particular pan because this particular moisture that has been added here will cook this potatoes and towards the end of cooking we will not have any of the moisture left so we'll be putting it on a low simmer and uh, so we'll be transferring this particular mixture to a baking dish and we'll be baking it in the oven uh, we can keep the temperature of the particular oven at around 180 degree centigrade for a time frame of 20 minutes and in the meantime I've already seasoned it with a little bit of salt and a bit of pepper powder and at this point of time we can go ahead and add a little bit more of the butter so when this particular mixture goes into the oven uh, the potatoes gets enough time to absorb the flavor of this particular stock and the moisture in this particular stock helps to cook that particular potato and adding on to that we have the crushed garlic and the thyme that gives it a nice uh, flavor and aroma to this particular potato preparation so I have already prepared the tray that will be that will be using to place it in the oven so I'll be placing the potatoes and pouring in the stock or the liquid so I uh, will be covering this particular baking dish with an aluminium foil so the idea is to allow the stock to slowly gradually cook the potatoes which are there and eventually drying up all the stock and getting the getting all the flavors and the seasoning into the potatoes so now we'll be moving ahead to the uh, oven and letting it cook for around 20 minutes and then we'll be taking it out and plating it so we'll be moving ahead and doing the last preparation for the day and uh, it's called Petit Pois à la Flamand so for this particular preparation uh, we have two main ingredients uh, first is the olivets of carrots so we've taken the small baby carrots and turned them into olivets and the other one is the green pea okay so we are using the dehydrated frozen green pea and if you get the seasonal fresh green pea uh, that is obviously much much better but the only thing that needs to be remembered is if you're using a seasonal fresh green pea we need to braise it or stew it for a longer period of time 
So as the name suggests, uh, a la flamande, and as we told, as we spoke about this particular style of preparation, it is a very rustic and a very simplistic way of cooking this particular vegetables, where they stew the vegetables or root vegetables with some flavorings and a good flavorful stock. Okay. So to start it off, we'll be taking a bit of olive oil. butter once the butter melts we'll be, we'll be adding on the olivettes of carrots Followed by the stock. So we are using again a vegetable stock, a white vegetable stock. And we need to remember that this particular dish needs to be cooked slowly. So we'll be stewing it, and to this we'll be adding the seasonings, a bit of salt. So the idea is. Uh, by the time this liquid dries up in your pan, the carrots are actually fully cooked. So as we also know that we are using the dehyd dehydrated frozen peas, so I will not be adding it together because the texture of the carrots and the peas are very different and moreover this, these are the dehydrated uh, frozen peas which are ready to cook. So I will be waiting for this particular uh, carrots to soften as well as waiting for the stock to get concentrated and more flavorful. I will be adding a little bit of sugar. This is just to uh, elevate the actual natural sweetness of the carrots that we normally get from the market. So we need to simmer it for some time. And, uh, and you need to regulate the flame so do not put it on a very high flame otherwise the liquid will evaporate but ultimately the carrots will still remain raw okay so at this point of time uh, the carrots the carrots are almost 70 percent cooked and we can see the liquid has also dried up substantially at this point of time we'll be adding the green pea And so once we add the green pea, let the liquid or rather the flavorful concentrated stock or the flavorful liquid flavor the green pea and the carrots. And towards the end, once the liquid dries up completely, we will be adding a little bit more of the butter and finally getting a nice glaze on this particular vegetable preparation. Uh, one more thing needs to be remembered that whenever you're cooking with green pea or any green vegetables, okay, uh, try not to expose it to extreme high temperature. And on the other hand, do not uh, refrain from covering it and cooking it for a long period of time. Because that way, this particular vegetable that has chlorophyll in it would turn brown in color. So if you would have started off with the seasonal fresh green pea, I would have added it a little bit more ahead. And now at this point of time when we can see that the liquid has almost dried up, we will be adding a little bit of butter. And yes, it is ready to, to be plated. So we will be going ahead and plating the food now. And uh, we have a large plate here. So we will be rimming the side of the plate with some chopped parsley just to give it a nice uh, visual appeal it's a little bit of the English parsley
Okay. So now I'll be pouring the sauce palwis as a base for this particular fish preparation. So as it, it is a hot emulsified sauce, so it needs to be kept warm. So for that matter, so I'll be warming it up lightly. Make sure that you don't curdle it. I'll be pouring it in the center of the plate. Next is we'll be placing the petit pois a la flamande. We'll be taking some of the carrots. Placing them neatly. So we'll be placing the carrots neatly, glazed, properly cooked up till al dant. Okay. Next, I'll be adding the petit pois. Following which, I'll be placing the chateau potatoes. So I'll be adding this one for this particular plating. Next would be the salmon. So once the salmon has been placed, next is we'll be using our, our other elements that we had prepared. So we're going for the slices of lemon, a sprig of fresh mint leaf. So our idea is to prepare the food to the best uh, possible level that we can take it to and uh, presenting it in the most uh, aesthetic way. So we are towards the end of this particular session and as we have seen uh, we started off with the soup and then finally preparing the other uh, components of this particular menu and finally plating it. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed this particular session and uh, hope you would be trying this particular dish out as and when it's possible. So I suggest go for, if you, if you do not get the salmon in your local market, you can go for the uh, other varieties of fish that you get it in the market. You can go for a red snapper or a sea bass. Or for the matter of fact, to practice it, you can go for even any carp or, or any fish from the carp family. And uh, I hope to see you and meet you again. And have a nice day. Thank you so much.